So let's, say, let's look at this example here. Let's look at the example where we have uh, x cubed plus y cubed is equal to y. Okay. What I'd like to do now is find d squared y dx squared, i.e. we're going to find the second derivative of this implicit function. Okay. So this has a technique that we haven't yet learned. It's not a hard one, but it's, it's a new step. Okay. It's not that hard of a problem, but my sleeves keep putting red marks up there. <laughs> All right. So just as before, we're going to take ddx of both sides. So this gives us 3x squared plus 3y squared times y prime is equal to y prime. Now, I think it's sort of, it just depends on the problem, what's the easiest next step. Okay? But I just sort of have had a habit, have always then solved this for y prime before taking the second derivative. I don't know if that's the best option or not. but you can try it the other way and you report back to me. Okay. So let's go ahead now and solve this for y prime just like we've been doing. Okay. So Cameron, what am I going to do? Solving for y prime. Bring all the terms to one side. Yeah, let's collect all the y, y prime terms over to one side. Okay. So that gives us 3x squared is equal to y prime minus 3y squared y prime. Folks, if you take all of your terms to the left, we're going to run into that scenario where you and I have the same answer, just in a different format. No big deal. It does make it hard to grade your papers. Okay. All right. So what's my next step? Uh, Sarah, what am I going to do next? You have to factor out the y primes. Yeah. We both terms over here have a common factor of y prime, so let's factor it out. So let's see, when I factor it out, certainly that'll give me minus 3y squared, y prime. What's left here, folks? I a one. Yeah, we've got an understood one there. Not an understood one, we've got a one there. Okay. All right, so now we're ready to solve for y prime. Exactly, to isolate that y prime. So that gives us that y prime is equal to 3x squared over 1 minus 3y squared. We found the first derivative. Now we're going to find the second derivative. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take the derivative of both sides again. Folks, I changed the order on that just because I wanted the uh, y double prime on the left. What do I get when I take the second, or when I take the derivative of y prime? What does that give me? Oh, it's just right here. Yep, you're right. We'll do a quotient rule. On the left-hand side, what do we have? We get y double prime. Okay. On the right-hand side, somebody said, was it, was it Sarah? Yeah, Sarah said we have a quotient rule. Pause for a moment. Identify the bottom and the top. So for the quotient rule, what do I write first, MC? You have the bottom times the derivative of the top. Great. So there's the bottom function. What's the derivative of our top function, folks? 6x. 6x. We got it. Okay. Bottom times the derivative of the top. What comes next? Uh, um, Charlie, what comes next? Minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Times the derivative of the bottom. Here's where it gets hard again, folks. What's the derivative of 1 minus 3y squared? Minus 6y times y prime. Times y prime. Yeah, right? Breaks my heart if we got this far into the quotient rule and you forget that the quotient rule generally returns a quotient. 
all over what, Abby? Uh, one minus three y squared. One minus three y squared, quantity squared. This is the first time I've gotten that right today. Yes? Yeah, great question. So Haley's saying, hey, I'm liking this uh, line of notation. So at this point, I had this. Right? Mm -hmm. When you took the derivative of dy dx with respect to x. Well, this is actually where one of the benefits of line of notation is it makes this, this part makes a little more sense now. Okay? I started out by taking d dx, and now I've got another d dx. So that gives me how many d's in the top? Two, so I rewrite it as d squared of the thing I was taking the derivative of. And then how many total dx's did I have? Two, so that's dx squared. And that's the way we write the notation for the second derivative in Leibniz notation. Which is a little bit strange, but it has to do with this kind of like this stacking of d dx of d dx of y. That's sort of what's going on there. Great question. All right, folks. This is this is the curveball. If that's all this was, then I wouldn't have taken the time to, I would have let you figure out how to do second derivatives on your own. Okay? But we're expected to give the answer to y double prime in terms of only the variables x and y. What variables do I have in my answer? I've got x's, I've got y's, and I've got a y prime. I've got a y prime. So what can I do? Yeah, same <laughs> says, let's substitute what y prime was equal to into this expression. Oh no, don't, don't, don't shake in your boots. Don't shake in your boots, we can do it. Yeah, shake out of my way. Okay, so y double prime then is just gonna be one minus three y squared times six x minus 3x squared times minus 6y. And then in place of y prime, I'm going to go back up and say, well, what was y prime? Well, y prime was, let me go ahead and put it in a different color, 3x squared over 1 minus 3y squared. <laughs> Where all of this, oops, no, no, no. Or, uh, where all of that is going in place of that y prime term. Don't forget it was still a quotient rule. All over 1 minus 3y squared squared. Not too bad. 